Hi team, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss about how to use PostgreSQL as a vector store. Now in earlier videos, I talked about using open search as a vector database. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to do it the same thing with PostgreSQL and the reason for using PostgreSQL is pretty simple. It has a very, very large, big community of developers. So at least I use it day and night. And if already there are tools available for storing, you know, embeddings, then definitely I'm going to use the existing PostgreSQL rather than migrating to some other vector data store. So that's why I prefer PostgreSQL. And again, uh, it has some extension called vector or PG vector. With that extension, it's pretty useful, you know, to store all the embeddings. So it is nothing, you know, uh, new for PostgreSQL. Uh, there are a lot of works already been done and it, it performs pretty much good. So that's where we are. We will be using PostgreSQL. Now, one of the thing which I'm going to use is I'm going to use Azure Managed Service. And uh, the reason for that is uh, Azure as such today, as of today provides installing extension, this extension called PG Vector which can be you know, used to have this functionality of storing vector done easily. That's why I'm going to use it. Now, what I know is there are other professional uh, cloud providers like AWS and all, which also give the same functionality. Or alternatively, what can be done is you can install uh, your own database on let's say uh, infrastructure as a service like Linode, and you can configure all the things there so that's how also you can do but today what i'm going to do is i'm going to use azure and again when i'm using azure i'm going to use the managed service itself rather than creating a you know instance installing those things so everything will be done by azure itself as a you know platform as a service so that's what what's going to happen now the theme is again the same uh, where you know what we are going to do is we are going to store some embeddings and we will use hugging face and test transformers but again, any kind of embedding can be used. You can use OpenAI embedding, you can use Cohere and all. So you will be creating essentially a knowledge base where you'll be storing all the embeddings. And then a user query will come and this user query will be again converted into one vector embedding. And then we will see how similar this user query is to this specific uh, document or sentence stored in this knowledge base. So yeah, that will be the flow for us today. Uh, so we will we'll walk through how do we create Azure PostgreSQL service. Then we will move on to how do we install PG vector extension on Azure. Then we will see some of the libraries that we need to install to access this, some of the infra related things, for example, you know, how do we access this PostgreSQL connection and all. And finally, yeah, we'll have a collab notebook where we will be doing all fancy things like storing, retrieving and all. So yeah, a lot of things to cover. Let's get started. So let me try to instantiate a service for Postgres flexible servers. So you can go to this search bar and type Postgres SQL flexible server and you will be having this screen where you can select, you know, whenever you want to instantiate. Now, what I have done is I have already started that whole process. So basically you have to do nothing, but you know, you have to select this thing. Once you come to this first page, you have to give your subscription, your resource group. I have given a name here, for example, a unique name. The region East US region is perfectly fine for me. Version I'm using 14, so there are four versions available 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 is also available as a preview. So, total five versions are available. So, we'll stick with 14. We wanted to do it for the development, so that's why we selected a development. You can, you know, choose production and all also. But this is a demo, so we'll select development. Uh, we don't need any availability zone, there is no preference for that, no high availability needed. For username and password, what I will do is I will copy some username and password. So let me type some username and password. Again, this 
service will be temporary. So post I deploy, I will delete this instance. So yeah, here you can go to next, which is you know networking. So public connectivity, public access, allow IP address, allow public access from Azure to. I will just click this because I want to directly connect with this. Now I will go to security. This is fine. Tags. This is fine. Review plus create. This is fine. So I will go for create, and after some time, I will come back to see what happened. So welcome back. The deployment is complete. Let's go to resource. Now let me go to server parameters. And let me search vector. Sorry, extension. So basically, what we are trying to do is we are trying to enable some extensions, and we have gone to server parameters and then searched Azure dot extensions. So for each version, for example, 11, 12, 13, 14, we will see which which kind of extensions are there. So we are searching for something called vector, which is here. So PG vector is in 14 version. Let's go here. Let's see if we can enable that. So we have vector. We, we are going to enable it. So we are going to save it. Yeah, it's done. Now let's switch on to our Colab notebook and try to see if we can access this specific PostgreSQL instance with vector extension enabled. Yeah, team, welcome again. So we'll walk through Colab notebook and see how do we access this PostgreSQL. So one thing which I have done is if you go to networking in your Azure console, what I have done is I have added all the IPs to access this service and this is temporarily done. This is done because you won't be able to access it directly. So when you are connecting to your Azure Postgres SQL service, you need to have you know this IP whitelisted. So either you can whitelist your IP from which you are accessing or you know you can add all the IP addresses. What I have done is the later I have allowed all the IP addresses. Now let's move on to PsychopG Colab Notebook. So basically, what we are going to do is we are going to use a library called PsychopG to connect with this Azure Postgres SQL connection. So here is the notebook. So what I have done is I have, I'm just mounting to this specific drive. Then what I'm trying to do is I'm just installing all the libraries. So I installed OpenAI library as well as Sentence Transformer library. Now I'm going to use Sentence Transformer, but you can do the same steps with OpenAI also. I will then install something called PsychopG2. And again, this is useful to access your Azure Postgres SQL database. So all the configurations that are needed, for example, uh, host name, the URL for a Postgres database, the username, password. I've saved it in something called myconfig.json. So you know you can see I have open AI, open API key, open AI key, DB host, port, username, and password stored in one of the configuration file. You can also use environment variable for this, which is also a very good practice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to this as your Postgres SQL instance. So here is how you do that. If you see, I didn't get any other connection. That means it is connected. I'm also doing one thing where I'm setting auto commit to true. So whenever I do some transactions, for example, insert statement or create database, I don't have to explicitly save them again and again. 
can be done or set up in one time using auto commit. Now, one thing which you need to do is uh, you need to also have once you install extension vector, you also have to execute this command command called create extension vector. And this is a necessary steps. I won't do it uh, right now because I already have done this. So whenever you are connecting to one of the database, you will have to perform this step mandatory. So this is the step. Now what I have done is I have instantiated uh, sentence transformer. So I'm using mini LM. So I will instantiate and I will create vector embeddings using this sentence transformers called mini LM. So that's what I'm doing. Now for demo, what I have done is I have three set of sentences which I have put it here. Now these sentences are from legal domain. So first of all, first one is talking about you know some date and all and base salary. Second is talking about something like you know waving something and third is more on something where you know some arbitration and all are given. So these are the three things which I can work on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to store them in DB. Then I'm going to retrieve it using some query and that user query will be very similar to one of the statement and we'll see that you know did we find something which is very similar to this document or not assuming that this is a this is representing a document so that is the step we need to do so post uh, defining these three text what i am going to do is i am going to encode this using my sentence transformer mini ln so what i will do is i will encode this as vectors and at the end what i'm going to get is a embedding so for each document or each text which is there i will get an embedding so that's what's happening here and i'm just showing you one of the embedding so for the first document this is the embedding how it looks like and here is the embedding size as such so i'm using mini lm so the size will be 384 now here what i'm trying to do is uh, I already have one of the tables created. So, you know, this step will do nothing but, you know, drop the table if it already exists. So what I did was I created and again dropped the table. So this step is not required, but suppose the table already exists, you will have to delete that. So that's why this step is there. Now with this command, which is create table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create new table and it will have three columns. So one is ID, which is again a number, then text, which is again the text of the document that we are storing and the embedding, which we are storing. When we are creating embedding, we also have to set the size. What is the size of the vector? And we have already derived the size with mini LM, it is 384. That's, that's where when you are defining the structure, you will get the, you will have to specify the vector size and you have specified it. So that is there. Now, post that, what we have is a table structure, you know, which can accept text as well as embedding. We also have three documents and with sentence transformers, we have already created three vector embeddings for those three sentences or three documents. Next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert them into the database. So here, what we are doing is we are, you know, enumerating through those documents. We are fetching the text and we are fetching the corresponding embedding. And if you are use Psychop G2 as such, then you can, you know, do insert into command and you can insert all three things together. So you can have those three things inserted. So three, those are inserted. And this is how your typical structure will look like so, you know, in database. If you go, this is how things will look like. This will be the structure which will be stored. And just to verify as such, what I have done is I am just counting here that how many records are there. So if you see, there are three records. So basically what you are doing is you are seeing count start. And after that, you are just printing it. And that's where three comes in. Now, if you want to see exact things which are stored, 
you can again use SQL and call you know ID text in ID from this and you will get all the rows so for example here what I am doing is I am retrieving ID text in embedding and I will get a tuple as result so what I am doing is nothing but I am just printing in, you know ID as such and that's what I am doing here now if I would have done you know one then I would have got text which is you know the second column so here I've got you know, text. So that's that's how I can verify that you know I have three rows inserted and exactly what is the structure which is stored and what is the structure which is retrieved. So we are able to retrieve the documents as well as embeddings. We have verified it. Now what another step we need to do is uh, since we have created this knowledge base and it's already stored. Once we have to retrieve some user query the query itself should be embedded and this embedding will be again compared to the embeddings already stored in knowledge base to find out how closer it is so what we have done is we have just asked it a question and uh, we have made an embedding out of this question and the embedding is again in mini lm we can use open ai embeddings also uh, that's how we can do it. The one thing which keeps in we have to keep in mind is the same embedding that you are using to create knowledge base same embedding has to be used for user query also. So it's not possible that you can do knowledge base creation in you know let's say open AI ADA and you want to fetch the documents using uh, embeddings from uh, let's say sentence transformers that's that's not going to work because the dimension should be same so that's that's the way it should work out so what we have done is again this query we have created an embedding and this is the embedding now what we are going to do is here is how we are going to retrieve so what i have done is i am just retrieving the text as well as the cosine similarity from the knowledge base and I'm comparing this uh, cosine similarity and sorting it. So basically in a nutshell how we are doing is the embeddings which are stored in knowledge base we are you know calculating a cosine similarity score with the user query embedding which is the query text which we want to retrieve the results for. For example this was one of the query. Once we get a cosine similarity, what we are doing is we are ordering by it. So, you know, if the cosine similarity is pretty much high, you will get the first result. And the next one will be the one which will be having lower cosine similarity and so on. So that's how we are doing. That. So if you see the user queries talking about, you know, moreover waves, demand, protest, notice of protest, etc, etc. Let's see, you know, what are the results which come up. So if you see the first thing which it pulled from knowledge base was something like this and again this is very similar to the user query. So that's how we are going to retrieve this uh, and, and that's how it's going to work. Uh, what we can again do is uh, we can also you know print cosine similarity itself like how close it is. So I can fetch the text as well as cosine similarity and you know if you see this space 0 0.75, 0 0.31 and so on and yeah, so on. So that's why you know that the user query is very similar to this document. Now what I'm going to do is again I'm going to change the query. So for example I am going to talk about you know where is arbitrator and again this is a random query and I just idea is to you know fetch another document which is like slightly close to you know the arbitration clause or arbitration keyword which is there in the knowledge base so if i execute this i will get a query embedding and again i will compare this query embedding with all the three documents and i will get the result so if you see uh, it says that you know except as set forth for in, in this this is document or arbitration and such so on and with some score so basically what it has done is it has found that you know maybe this document or this sentence is much more closer and that's how we can use this as a knowledge base. So again uh, 
the whole idea of uh, using this uh, PostgreSQL extension, vector extension was that we already have many vector databases. For example, you know, we have Pinecone, we have, let's say, OpenSearch, Elasticsearch, or we have something called ChromaDB. Now, PostgreSQL, again, is one of the alternative. It always have, you know, a very, very big community to support things. So again, this could be one of the choices for storing all the vectors. And, uh, you know, you can store vectors, you can retrieve them, and it, it works as fine as any commercial database, vector database. So that's what we wanted to show. Uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, until next time, thank you so much. Bye.